Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. And I am your host, Conrad Cushman, and we are here to talk about NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. Thank you for listening to Everything Pro Wrestling. We are going to review the NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 show. And as you can hear, my voice is not the greatest right now. I was at a concert last night. Jay-Z and Beyonce, they put on a heck of a show for On The Run Tour 2. But my voice is going to sound like this throughout the whole review, guys. So if it bothers you, I apologize. But we do need to review this show because I thought it was an excellent show and had a lot of points to talk about. So let's get right into the review. In the opening contest for the NXT Tag Team titles, we had the Undisputed Era versus Mustache Mountain. Now, when I first saw this match, I expected to, this to be really good because their previous matches have been really good. And these guys have always delivered since they've been in the ring with each other in tag matches. And at first you thought you were going to see a lot of the same things over and over again, which you probably would. But they did some great teases in this match. Um, they had a spot where Kyle O'Reilly had a heel hook locked in on Tyler Bate, and it was reversed, and Trent Seven was holding the towel. And then he was telling him, don't throw it in. He teased his throwing it in, and the towel winds up getting uh, thrown to the side. Then they also did a teasing spot where they had the burning hammer with the knee landing, and I thought it was over, not going to lie. Um, and then Kyle O'Reilly kicked out of that, and it was unbelievable. And the finish of the match came when basically Roderick Strong interfered, and it was Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong in the ring. They get rid of Tyler Bate, and you can see Trent Seven trying to set up a move, and someone comes down and hits him in his knee, and Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly do like a sick kick leg sweep combo, and it ends Trent Seven. One, two, three, the Undisputed Era are still your tag team champions. In the end, I gave the match an overall grade of an A. Definitely something I would recommend people check out, especially if they've loved their previous tag team matches. They did an excellent job with this one. So immediately after the tag title match ends, um, the Undisputed Era are kind of celebrating, and then the War Raiders come out and attack them. They beat the crap out of these guys, um, basically throwing Roderick Strong to the floor. Kyle O'Reilly gets a pop-up slam. He also eats the finisher of the War Raiders, and the War Raiders are coming for the NXT Tag Team Championship. We also get a cool promotion for the Mayans uh, television show. If you're a fan of Son of Anarchy, Kurt Sutter created that as well. I'm a big fan of the show. That's why I'm bringing it up. And they are showing that it partnered up with NXT TakeOver. And it shows that they're going after that demographic of the 18 to, I would say, 30 to 55-year-old male. And that's going to appeal to them. So definitely a good job with the marketing and branding of that. In what I would consider to be a tough spot, we get the second match of the night, which was the Velveteen Dream versus EC3. Two of NXT's top talent guys who I think are going to be in the main event scene eventually. Now, this comes out as a tough match because of the reason that that NXT tag title match delivered on all aspects. And I thought it was great. But when you're that second match of the night, you have to figure out a way to keep the crowd into it. And I give both of these gentlemen props because they did that. Now, the Velveteen Dream comes out and makes his notorious entrance and that's um gonna fit right into this he comes out as the king of brooklyn new york the notorious biggie smalls and if you didn't know that's one of my favorite rappers um biggie smalls is basically mentioned on his tights where it says notorious and he comes out with the classic basically he wore an attire that everyone associates with biggie in brooklyn so he did an excellent job, but the main thing that I noticed that was on his tights 
basically was saying, Vince, call me up. And I could not believe when I saw that. I'm sorry, it said, call me up, Vince, right on the back of his tights. And immediately when I saw it, I wanted to yell, no, 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 no. Because I feel that they have not done a good job with NXT talent coming up to the main roster. And to me, it feels more like a demotion than getting called up. I'm hoping that WWE figures out how to use this because I don't want the Velveteen Dream screwed up. Same with some of the other people that are down there now, Adam Cole, Shayna Baszler, so many more. I don't want these guys screwed up, and it seems like it could easily happen with people going up to the main roster getting lost in the shuffle. EC3 comes out, makes his usual entrance. Now, in this match, I noticed the Dream did a lot of like tribute spots. He did a spot for HBK where he gets hung up on the ropes and he get, basically he gets kicked in the stomach three times, falls onto the ropes, gets shaken off the ropes. He had a macho man spot where he puts his arms up and drops an elbow. He had Rick Rude basically, um, how do I want to describe this? He was in the ring and he was like walking around like Rick Rude. He even did the tight spot with EC3 where he tried to grab his tights. All stuff that you've seen in Rick Rude matches. And he even did the Ric Flair spot where he went up to the top. No, 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 don't throw me off. And he takes a bump. The Dream has been doing his homework. And he's done a tremendous job with that. Now, the match was mostly what I expected. It did it did struggle because of that first match to keep the crowd into it. But they kept them in long enough. And then they got them to start buying in towards the end. Now, what happens is... On the outside, it starts with that DDT that the Dream always does, and it happens to EC3, who was dominating the match, on the outside on the, um, the metal ramp when they come down. And then on the apron, the Velveteen Dream finally gets a hold of EC3 and gives him the rolling Death Valley driver on the apron. And then EC3 gets a cut above his eye, and the Velveteen Dream drops his patented elbow from the top rope onto EC3 laid out on the apron. Hashtag dream over, one, two, three. The Velveteen Dream picks up a much-needed victory. Overall, I'll give this match a grade of a B. Definitely one, though, that you should check out. Now, before the third match begins, we do see an appearance in the crowd from Matt Riddle. And he appears on camera in the classic new signing spot where they're in the crowd and fans are chanting, and you heard, bro, bro, bro. So we will be seeing Matt Riddle in NXT very soon. Now, we have the NXT North American Championship match next. It was Adam Cole, baby, defending his championship versus Ricochet. And it's been one year since the Undisputed Era debuted, and Adam Cole has done a really good job since coming in. Now, when I was watching this match, all I could think about was Ricochet needs to do uh, mocap for video game characters or whatever for WWE 2K19 when it comes out. Ricochet definitely needs to do mocap for it because he is spot on and he had so many moves perfectly that I'm like, that is so difficult to do. Like, I couldn't even imagine myself doing a flip. I, I just couldn't imagine doing flips like that. So Ricochet, thumbs up for that. Now... I want to talk about one of my favorite spots in this match, which was the timing on the super kick on the springboard backflip. Adam Cole's timing was impeccable. Like, it was perfect, guys. He Ricochet goes for a springboard backflip. Think of a lion salt, basically. And Adam Cole super kicked him right in his neck in the perfect spot. Like, it happened magically. So, big shout out to both guys for setting that up. And also, I have in here as a note, Moro Ronaldo is fan-freaking-tastic. He was calling this match, making everything feel important throughout the entire night. Moro Ronaldo, you are tremendous, my friend, and you did a heck of a job. And the match ends when there's a hurricanrana from the ring to the apron, then Adam Cole lands on the floor, and then a 630, and we get a new NXT North American champion, Ricochet. I gave this match a grade of a B plus. It was well-deserved. Both men did a good job, and I can't wait to see what they do next. All right, I'm trying to stay hydrated in between these segments, guys. Um, Mark Henry and Kevin Owens are shown in the crowd, adding that big feel for the TakeOver shows, which they do often, having the actual main roster talent there to cheer on some of the guys. So very cool to see that. 
we get to match four, which was for the NXT Women's Championship. Shayna Baszler, the champion, defending against Kyrie Sane. Baszler is vicious in this match. I thought the spot with her twisting uh, Kyrie's ankles were crazy. Like, or I'm sorry, well, she just did the one ankle, but she twisted it in different ways in both directions, and I just thought it looked gruesome. How they do that, I don't know, unless that's just Kyrie Sane's flexibility. But good job. And also the stomp that she usually does on the elbow when she did on the ankle, good job. They made Shayna Baszler look like an absolute killer in this match. She was going for it, and she just looked straight up mean when she did everything. Now, Kyrie Sane, I have written in my notes as well here for her that she is a little ball of fire. When she gets rolling in the match, she does a really good job of getting people behind her, and she gets a lot of uh, momentum behind her moves, and I like that. So good job to her. Now, the ending really got me in this match. Um, they did a really good job playing off of the Mae Young Classic feud, who's better, and it looks like either woman could win on any day. But in the end here, Kyrie Sane goes up and tries to hit her elbow again from the top rope, but Baszler gets her feet up while she's going for it, and puts her into her submission uh, chokehold. But at that point, Sane reverses into the classic Bret Hart when he gets put into a sleeper roll-up. One, two, three, there's a new NXT champion, Kyrie Sane. And I have to give this match the overall grade of a B. They did a good job, and they delivered. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Prophecy from the Suplex Session Podcast, where I give my analysis on your weekly pro wrestling programming. Baby! Right now, you are listening to Everything Pro Wrestling with my good friend Conrad. Stay tuned. After listening to this podcast, make sure you check out Prophecy in the Suplex Session. Now, before we get into the main event, we did have an NXT UK ad shown during this show, and it basically got you hyped for the show and said coming soon. So make sure you check in with the Everything Pro Wrestling Facebook group for all the latest news on that. Now we get to the main event. It's a last man standing match for the NXT Championship with Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. So immediately I noticed during Johnny Gargano's entrance, he comes out wearing an attire that shows his recent personality. It plays off of him being conflicted. He at one point is wearing the blue and red, which I thought of Spider-Man instantly and how he's a superhero. And you guys know Spider-Man's story. And then at the other side, though, I saw that he had some stuff that resembled Venom as well in his tights and with his vest. And it just shows his conflicted personality and how he's been acting lately. So very cool, nice touch of detail that I love as part of NXT. Um, Tommaso Ciampa comes out to no music, as he always does. And there were some chants that I couldn't make out. It said, blank you, Ciampa. I'll let you guys fill in what they were saying. Um, Just crazy. Brooklyn was very into this match from the entrances. So we get lots of spots in this match, and I'm just going to go through some of them. You're going to see someone get lawn darted into a chair. I never thought I'd say the word lawn darted on a podcast. Uh, We had a stack table with the bottom with the legs up, and we saw someone pull up the mats exposing the concrete as well. We saw a lot of good exchanges with selling from Gargano, even him showing that his back was hurt throughout the match. We had Tommaso Ciampa lift up the uh, ring mat in the actual ring and expose the bottom of the ring, uh, exposing the wood that's underneath. And Gargano recognizes that spot's about to happen again, which happened in New Orleans, and he ends up hitting him with a fire extinguisher and spraying him in the face. So Gargano ends up DDTing Ciampa as well on the hardwood like he did to him in New Orleans. And there's a lot of playing back off of past storylines with this, which makes it so good. And I also think that I know who wrote this match by the next spot I saw. And I'm going to say it's Shawn Michaels because they do the classic Marky and super kick spot. And if you ever remember in Shawn Michaels old matches, Mark Eaton was the timekeeper for WWE for years. And he was recently, I think he was let go from the company a couple of years ago. And 
every time Shawn Michaels did the super kick, Mark Eaton is the guy who gets super kicked. So Mark Eaton super kick spot happens where a crew member gets super kicked by accident with Gargano because Ciampa moved. And it sets up a really cool spot where Gargano's looking like concerned for the guy, but he knows he's got to get back to wrestling. And Tommaso comes in with a chair and puts his knee behind it, like puts it kind of like Rob Van Dam style and puts his knee underneath and knocks the crap out of Johnny Gargano. And after that, he goes through a barricade. Tommaso Ciampa grabs chairs, puts them on top of him, the barricade on top of him, even the guy from the ring crew on top of him. And he tries to bury him for the count. The ref gets up to nine and Johnny Gargano gets up. Tommaso Ciampa gets out the handcuffs and Gargano gets control and locks one of them on Ciampa's arm. They battle near the tables in the concrete, super kick, Ciampa falls through the tables and he ends up finding a way to get up once again. And he uses a crutch to get up, the same crutch that they've been using in the storytelling. And I think if it's a metaphor as well that he needed a crutch to get up. So fight forever chance breakout from Brooklyn. And then we get them making their way up the ramp, only one handcuff still on Tommaso Ciampa. And you see shades of takeover Chicago where Johnny Gargano is yelling at him and throwing him face first into the screen. After that, he uh, rams his head into the stage and locks him up on the stage, basically handcuffing him to the stage towards the end where he's sitting at the edge where you get thrown off. And you can see Gargano basically slamming his head repeatedly over and over into the stage. And he super kicks him several times and Tommaso's pleading, saying sorry, and Gargano's not going for any of it. So afterwards, Gargano basically has it won, but he keeps wanting to inflict more punishment on Tommaso Ciampa. So what do you think ends up happening? Gargano gets the setup, and there's nowhere for Tommaso to go. Gargano pulls down the uh, knee pad, and he backs up and basically pays tribute to DIY in the setup of the move. And he goes and he tries to take off Ciampa's head. He winds up going over one of the um, the ring crew uh, box holders and on top of a table, and Gargano is down. The referee gets at a nine count. Both men are down. And how I said he was on the edge of that stage, Ciampa rolls off the edge of the stage and stands up and the 10 count is counted and Johnny Gargano can't get up because he hurt his knee. And Tommaso Ciampa is still your NXT champion. I have in here, congratulations, Johnny, you played yourself. He went too far and cost himself the title. And this tells the story of the self-destruction of Johnny Gargano in this match and Moro also announces that Johnny Gargano appears to have dislocated his knee. An amazing feud thus far, guys. My question is, are you sick of seeing it? And that I'm still not sure myself. I think they should pause it for now and go on to some other things and come back to it. But I have in here as the final question. Is this feud over? Overall, I gave it a grade of an A+. I definitely recommend anyone interested in this show to check this match out. It was amazing. It's now time for my overall thoughts on the show and my final grade. Overall, I thought the Brooklyn crowd was tremendous tonight, guys. They always show up and they do a good job with their interactions. So big props to Brooklyn. Also, SummerSlam. You guys have a lot to live up to for this show to deliver tonight for the fans. So I hope that SummerSlam is a good show and they can put on at least a decent show for everyone, but they have a lot to live up to compared to NXT. And finally, the final grade for this show is going to be an A-. minus. I thought it was an excellent show and one if you missed, you should definitely go back and check out. Thank you for listening to Everything Pro Wrestling. Peace.